and welcome to our Facebook Live event. I'm Dr. Leslie Phillips, Senior Director of Research Insights and Innovations and in-house epidemiology epidemiologist at SEIU 775 Benefits Group. Joining me today are our peer mentor team for a conversation about tips on how to stay safe, healthy, and positive during stressful times like these. This pandemic has tested us all and especially frontline workers like caregivers. And no one understands the changes and adjustments that you've had to make in your daily work and life more than other caregivers. Today, peer mentors Tammy, Bree, and Gannett will be sharing their experiences and how they've adjusted their personal and professional lives because of COVID-19, as well as things they have learned from other caregivers. We hope you walk away feeling inspired, informed, and connected to your caregiver community. We want to hear from you too. If you have an experience you'd like to share or questions for us, please leave a comment and we will uh, talk about it during this event. To get started, I'd like to ask our peer mentors to share their background with caregiving. Bree, can you kick us off? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Bree, and I've been a caregiver since September 2015. So that makes it about five years now. I started my caregiver journey working as an agency provider. But soon after, I began to support a close family member, where I became a contracted individual provider. Thanks. Tammy? Hi, everyone. My name's Tammy. I've been a caregiver for about five years. I uh, started caregiving when my grandfather got sick. I took care of him on hospice um, until he passed away. And um, then my, my neighbor had actually reached out to me and asked me to be her caregiver. Um, so it was through her that I became certified. I went through the basic training 70 hours and took my test. And uh, I've been doing that for a while. And then when I went back to school, I actually started doing agency work to better fit my schedule, um, where I would take on hospice clients and work with different family members. Um, and so that's kind of my background in caregiving. Thanks. And Gannett? Hi, everyone. My name is Gannett, and I've been a caregiver since 2006. But a paid caregiver since 2012. It puts me like 14 years I care for my daughter who is 26 years old. I am a certified home care aide and peer mentor. As a peer mentor, I help other caregivers who need to become certified. Thanks, Gannett. As we've all experienced, and this may sound like an understatement, COVID-19 has required big changes to the ways we live and work. I'd love to hear about your routines. How have you adjusted during the pandemic? Bree, can you get us started? Yeah, I have adjusted my life in many ways uh, due to the COVID-19. I started to work from home. Me and my client began to put in place a new way to make sure she gets all the support she needs while keeping safe social distancing. So we set up scheduled Zoom check-ins. Um, so I would still be able to support her needs virtually um, and also uh, to do our doctor's appointments. You bring up such a great point, getting creative about ways you can provide care remotely, safely. It's essential to protecting yourself and your client. While every scenario is different, it's best to deliver care remotely when you can. For those tuning in, think about the task you can do using technology and that can be performed outside the home. We'll also place some recommendations in the comments section. What about you, Tammy? Well, currently I work as a peer mentor um, so that I'm not caregiving on a regular basis anymore. Um, I mostly help incoming caregivers get through their training and their certification journeys. Um, so the hardest part for me during this pandemic has really not been able to see my friends, see my family, um, and I have definitely become incredibly more comfortable talking on the phone as well as using apps like Zoom um, to connect with my loved ones. Indeed. And how about you, Gannett? By working from home, I can spend more time with my family and my clients. I also save time by not having to commit uh, back and forth from work to from work and to work. Uh, lastly, I have been enjoying outdoor and taking walk 
for self-care? Oh, that's so great, Gannette. I'm really glad you brought that up because staying home is an opportunity for so many of us to enjoy downtime or take up a new hobby. For me, it's been watercoloring, which is my big stretch activity, and it's been so much fun. Tammy and Bree, what have you been doing with your spare time? And to our audience, please leave a comment below and see what other caregivers have been doing. Tammy? Yeah, similar to you, Leslie, I've been doing a lot of painting myself. Uh, me and my roommate both love to paint. Uh, we've also have really enjoyed the extra time we get to spend within that with another. Um, I don't have to commute to work anymore. Working from home has given me some extra time to cook really great meals with my roommate as well as um, try other creative outlets. Great, and Bree? Yeah, just like Tammy said, um, since I'm not stuck in daily rush hour traffic anymore, I love having the extra downtime to take my dog to check the mail with me, walk around our neighborhood, or hit the dog park every now and again, which is his favorite, I would say. I think he really enjoys all the new downtime that I have that I can spend with him. That's awesome. And I think it's pretty unanimous. No one is missing time in traffic. Thinking about this time and the adjustments you've had to make, what's been most helpful for you as you've made adjustments to your usual routine? Bree? Uh, I think getting the support on ways to keep social distancing and being hands-on with my client and getting emails with updates and insights about next steps for healthcare workers like myself. That's great. And what about you, Gannette? Because I don't have to travel to and from the office right now. I can spend more time with my client, working and helping with other caregivers. Excellent. And Tammy? Yeah, I have been able to use this downtime to re-energize and to be creative, um, which has been really great. I also think that my, my perspective as I've made these adjustments has really allowed me to turn something super negative and scary into something positive, um, some a positive transition of change and betterment for my health. Um, I've also really been practicing my self-care. I know as a caregiver, it's really important to take good care of yourself because you can't pour from an empty glass. Um, and so I have found a really great free app called Ginger, uh, which is a emotional health app that allows you to speak with a health coach on challenges and things that are going on in your life. It can help provide you with some self-care self options and really help you work through those challenges. Uh, there's also a couple other programs that I have found that have been very helpful, including um, the EAP program, as well as uh, our mindfulness training. That's great. I'm so glad you're not letting that cup go empty. We'd love to hear from our audience. How have you adjusted your routine due to COVID-19? Please share with us in the comments section. As peer mentors, you are talking to caregivers all day long. What have you been hearing from your fellow caregivers? What support's most needed right now? And what advice have you been giving? Tammy? Yeah, one thing I've been hearing from caregivers during this time is that with everything changing so quickly, it's really easy to feel burnt out or exhausted. Um, we've received a lot of questions like, how can I take care of myself um, so that I can take care of those who need me most? I feel like many caregivers have really expressed an increased desire for those self-care resources, like the ones I talked about earlier. Thanks, and what are you hearing, Bree? Yeah, um, I'm hearing lots of caregivers have concerns about working during the COVID-19 um, and also not able to work, getting back on track, controlling their client's environment, um, and also looking for additional clients. It was, it, it was important for caregivers to know how to keep themselves and their clients healthy and safe. I would remind them to visit our website uh, for the latest resources to stay safe for those working, uh, looking for work, I would say, check out Karina because it's a really good option to find new clients. Great, and Gannett, what are you hearing? Many caregivers are having a concern about PPE and about their safety working with clients. 
I advise them to relax because SEIU 775 is addressing all their concerns. Such a great point, Gannett, about PPE. I think it's a great time to review personal protective equipment best practices for caregivers. And this is something we can never review too many times, in my opinion. And there's some really good news here. Caregivers are now on the highest priority list for PPE so that they can request it. We'll share a link to our website where you can get information about PPE and learn how to request it. So see the comments section. We have watched Washington reopening in careful phases. In some cases, things seem to be going well, and in others, there appears to be a surge in new cases beyond what's expected or sustainable. Most recently, the state has held back on advancing counties to the next phase due to an upsurge in cases. The Washington State Department of Health has been tracking metrics that help us move safely from phase to phase. Some of the things they're looking at are the rate of new cases, the amount of testing being conducted, and the percent of those tests that are positive for COVID-19, and critically, hospital bed capacity. We've seen Yakima, Spike, Benton, and Franklin counties pause in their reopening, and Olympia go into phase three. So much differs by location. And I wonder, as you think about the state reopening, what are you most worried about? And what's most exciting? Bree? Yeah, I would say my biggest concern is that with the state reopening in some areas after other areas and with people now out and about throughout the state, that there will be another COVID-19 outbreak that could hit. Yeah, that's a really fair concern. Tammy? Yeah, I think my concerns are very similar. I'm just worried um, people won't be taking the proper precautions like wearing a mask or washing their hands. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm really excited to actually get back out there, sit down and eat at a restaurant again or hang out with my friends. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that as we return to normal activities, to keep in mind that this is a new normal going forward. Thanks. And what about you, Gannett? When the state reopens, I will be excited to see my co-workers in person. However, I'm concerned the number of cases will rise as more places start to reopen. Using transportation will be scary because some people will be careless without masks. Yeah, such, I think, valid concerns about this phase. And I think it's normal for cases to rise as we reopen, that's expected. And yet doing everything we can to mitigate that is part of the responsibility we have with face covering, social distancing, and all the other actions we're taking. We are going to have new cases, new hospitalizations, and sadly, new deaths. And the state is doing a great job of reopening slowly to make sure they can mitigate these risks, not have too many new cases, and never overload our hospitals. This is why there are pauses and options even to go back to an earlier phase. It won't be perfect, but I truly believe that with a slow reopening and adherence to social distancing and face coverings, we'll be able to progress into new phases and new normals. We're getting ready to wrap up, but before we go, are there any personal tips you would like to share with other caregivers? Bree? Yeah, um, I would love to let everyone know SEIU 775 Benefits Group are sending lots of helpful emails to you guys right now about training, free benefits, and more. Make sure to check out your email so you don't miss any of those resources. Fantastic. Tammy? Yeah, I just want everyone to remember to take time for their selves and for your family um, and to practice self-care. Please download Ginger. Remember that you're not alone. Um, stay safe and don't forget to wash your hands. Indeed. And Gannett? I would like uh, to let caregivers know to continue using PPE so that they can keep themselves and their clients safe. Yeah, I would second that one. Thank you so much, Bree, Tammy, Gannett, chatting with me today and about what it's like to be living and working as a caregiver during a pandemic. Your experiences and stories are so helpful to other caregivers.
and thank you to everyone who joined us today. To the peer mentors and everyone who tuned in for the work you're doing. You are on the front lines of this pandemic and protecting the most vulnerable in our communities. We know a lot of change is happening with COVID-19 and really fast. And you may have questions about new discoveries and how they may impact your work and your life. Please keep an eye out for Facebook Live event in the next few weeks on the changing science of COVID-19 and how we can understand that in terms of actions you and we all can take to reduce risk. Risk as you deliver care in the home and risk as you go out and about in your lives outside of client care. For more information about peer mentors, COVID-19, self-care, and more, visit our website, myseiubenefits.org. You can also find contact information for the Member Resource Center, and they can answer any questions you have, and that's on our homepage. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, and we'll see you soon.